spirit of faith. I will both defend, protect from harm and danger and avenge to take, it, to take vengeance for my chosen people, my elect. But when I return, will I find persistent, continually firming in spite of opposition and difficulty? When I return, will I find persistent kind of faith? God really wants to change how we see ourselves in regards to who we are and to, to him and in him. If we don't think right, we can't see right. We can't speak right and we won't act right. We won't minimize our potential if we don't change our thinking about who we are to God and in God. An unrenewed mind affects our ability to manifest God's promises in the earth. A un an unrenewed mind denies us access to the liberty and freedom God has given us. Change the mindset of living right to earn the blessing. Receive what Christ uh, died to give us. At our best, our righteousness is like filthy rags. We can't earn the blessings. God already knows our end from our beginning. Nothing we do catch him by surprise. Receive the gift of grace and gift of forgiveness. Is this a license to sin? Certainly not. But he is just and he is faithful to forgive. His strength is made perfect in weakness, not by power nor by might, but by his spirit. All things work together for good to them who love him and are called according to his purpose. God, enlarge our capacity to receive from you. Cultivate the gifts in you and live life on purpose and for purpose. Be legacy focused and focus on kingdom advancement. Divine purpose, which is linked to your God-given gifts, will give you life structure. It will guide your yes and your no. It will bring both balance and fulfillment because you will be fulfilling the very reason you were created. It would truly be food to the very core of who you are. Carelessly living with no goals or objectives in mind cease when we live life on purpose and for, and for purpose. And then another word says, lay hold of my burden, then you can be still and know that I am God. Lay hold of my burden, then you can be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is kind of a summation of all that had been happening with Friday night prayer and uh, different things going on this week. Amen. But this, is, this was like a summation. Amen. This was like a summation of what God um, was saying to us. And where is, uh, you, you're going to say something? Praise God. You got that mic right there, Teresa? I want to share something real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look, uh, this morning, I don't know how many of y'all missed 10 o'clock prayer, but I want you to know you missed it. You really, yes. really missed it. It was good. But uh, ben, I want to share, I'm going to share bits and pieces. I won't share all of it with you, but it was a rerun for me. It was a rerun for you too, Darius, right? My wife and Kyrie, this is all a rerun. God showed me that, I don't know how long it's been, maybe about a month ago or something. Uh, he had already showed me that and what, what was going to take place and how it was going to take place in detail, great detail. So detailed that I'll leave some of it out. <laughs> but what he showed me was that, uh, the, the part that you need to know is that God want to do a thing in Zion, and the thing he's going to do in Zion is going to come through our worship. Not just any worship, not an emotional thing, a spiritual thing. It's going to come through our worship. Everything he's going to do is going to be through our worship. He, he, he was, when God was speaking this thing to me, it was like people are going to get healed that they have no understanding of God. They don't understand. They don't even understand what's going on with them, but they're going to walk into this atmosphere, this place, this location, and they're going to be healed. And he told me that that was that thing was going to fill the house. Praise God. Now, here's how that worked. So y'all get ready, pastors, co-pastors, y'all get ready. Here's how it worked. It, it worked because we was on one accord. It was a corporate experience. So that means there were no spectators. Everybody was partakers mm. because that's how we ushered his presence in when we got on one accord. So that's what he showed me from that. So and, and what we experienced this morning, I didn't even realize what time it was. What we experienced this morning, that ain't exactly what I saw. Reason being because what he showed me was that it was going to be recorded. Did I tell you that, Darius? Curtis, it was going to be recorded. The whole thing from the time we started praying at 10 o'clock all the way through your message, Pastor. We was going to create that atmosphere, and Pastor was going to preach over top of that, and it was going out to the nations. Wow. Now, I'll leave the rest of the details out, but you're a part of that. So people are going to come in that environment and not understand it and be healed. Wow. That's a big deal in my Thank book. You, Lord. you hear me? It is a big deal. So I'm going to celebrate so hard because God had already showed me this. Hallelujah. I'm like, God, I'm taking part in this. You're doing this thing, and I'm taking part in it. Thank you, Father. That's enough to celebrate. Glory so when you come God. in here, there's no spectating. 
Thank one thing he showed me too was that this Thank was you. the new normal. Praise if you God. don't come in and experience that, then we missed it. <laughs> and we missed it B. <laughs> this is only Ooh, the beginning. That was a God. new normal. Glory to God. No more. And you come in, it's like usual God. church. You missed it. Glory to God. We almost got, how many times was it, baby? I said it twice. We almost got there. Something like that. I'm telling you, it was like I, God was showing to me before it was happening. Twi two Ooh. services, we was right on the edge of it, and we missed it. Thank Praise you. team, y'all included. You missed it. But God showed me, he said, when they get there, Ooh. this is the one that's going to lead us in. He showed me that I'm going to use him. There's some others I won't say, but he showed me I was going to use him. He was going to be a key component. Thank you, Father. And it was all prophetic. This is not a rehearse. This is nobody else's song. We're not going to be singing songs that we heard somebody else play. Mm. It was all going to be prophetic, authentic, original. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah. That's what's going to take place in this house. Amen. So no spectator. Let's get a part of it. Yes. Let's come in every yes. Sunday yes. 10 yes. and expect God to move. Yes, yes, yes. He's yes. reassuring me in my spirit that he has no intention of doing anything less. Thank you, Father. If we become one. Yes. So, Pastor, get ready. Mm, I'm ready. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. Hallelujah. I'm ready. Glory be to God. Amen. T.D. Jake said, get ready. I'm telling him I'm already ready. Amen. Tell him, let's go. Glory to God. Come on, let's thank God. Amen. Let's release that expectation. Release that expectation for what God desires to do. Come on, in, in your life, in your family, in your home, in your finances, in your body. Glory to God. Father, thank you. You're greater, Lord. You're greater. You're greater. Hallelujah. You're greater, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We're coming into that priesthood anointing, God. That priesthood anointing. It's good that we play music. It's good that we sing or, or work with children. And it's good that we do, do outreach and all the different things that we do in the church. But the greatest thing we need to understand about who we are is we're part of that priesthood. Part of that priesthood. You, you, you're a royal priesthood. A royal priesthood. You've been anointed to carry the presence of God and to carry the glory of God. You've been anointed to come close to Him. Thank you, Father. To enter into His presence. The anointing is upon your life. Glory to God. How to worship. We have to teach others how to worship the king. How to worship the king. How to worship the king. Glory to God. You are priest. You are priest. Thank you, Father. You are priest. You are chosen generation. You've been chosen. You can't just become a priest, you gotta be chosen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Got to be chosen to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto him. Offer up our bodies as living sacrifices unto him. The fruit of our lips, as we give thanks to his name. We say, Father, we thank you. Glory to God. We give thanks unto his name. Because he's great and he's mighty and he's awesome. God is awesome. He's awesome. I received that word today. Glory to God. I received that word today. We received that word today. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm just going to be brief today, praise God. I really felt that, um, you know, God was just wanting to have his way today. Is one to have his way today. So, Father, we thank you. We yield ourselves to you today, Father. Thank you for you having free course, Lord. We'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Because much of our worship now in churches is, is to man. You know, every, everything's geared around structuring our, our worship, our services around what people want. You know, that's the, that's the going thing. But that's not the temple God's going to inhabit. Yeah, that's, that's not the temple God is going to... Oh, oh it, it'll go good for a while. But if God didn't build it, 
except the Lord build the house, it'll fizzle out. It'll fizzle out. Amen. That's what Gamaliel told him about them apostles. He said, leave them alone. He said, because if it be of God, he said, if it's not of God, you ain't got to worry about it. It'll come to naught. He said, but if it be of God, you don't want to fight against it. Amen. You don't want to fight against it. It's hard to kick against the pricks. Don't fight against it. See, thank you, Father. But just flow with him. Just flow with him. Thank you, Lord. Y'all cold? Is it cold in here? Y'all cook? Y'all cut? Is AC still? I'm sorry. Y'all heated it up. Praise God. Y'all, that went off. We didn't cut that one on. We just had this one on. So this side of the room, I see them putting on coats, jackets, sweaters, and, and, and shawls. That, that was already off. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. First things first, guys. First things first. Kingdom alignment. Kingdom alignment. And uh, I, I can't start to get into to, to this today, so I'm just going to uh, say a, f- a couple of things and get out your way. Praise God. But as we move along, we're going to be talking about this first. Of course, we told you last week what it means to be first, foremost, in place, preceding all others. The thing we put before anything else. First things first. And we touched briefly on um, the, the law of first things. We talked about the law of first things, uh, and the Bible uh, talks about something called the law of first mention. And you see this in the book of Genesis, where a lot of things are mentioned. So when we talk about this law of first things, um, there, there's, there's some laws of first mention when it comes to Jesus. Okay? And there were some things he talked about as it relates to first. When we observe the, the law of first things taught by the Lord, um, these are some of the things we're going to cover as we, as we go forward. Matthew 6 and 33. We touched on this last week. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things, he said, will be added unto you. That's a first. That's a first. Don't just seek the kingdom, seek the king. He said, seek the king. When you seek the king, he'll give you the kingdom. He'll give you the kingdom. Secondly, Matthew 7, 4, and 5 says this. How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck out of your eye? And look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite, first, remove the plank out of your own eye. And then you'll see clearly to move the speck out of your brother's eye. First. In other words, he said, first deal with you. Spiritual alignment. He said, first, first, let's deal with us before we begin to deal with everybody else. That's what happens when we have a critical spirit. We see all the wrong. We see all, all the negative about what's in other people. Amen. That's a wrong spirit, guys. See, what, what's happening is you got that log in your eye. And all you can see is what's wrong with what everybody else do. All oh, that preacher, all oh, they need to do this. And all oh, they were saying that. And all oh, the preacher need to preach this. And why are See, you're always seeing the wrong. And Jesus said, no, no. The law of first things is, he said, first, remove the plank out of your own eye. When we get the plank out of our own eye, we'll see people the way God see people. Let me say that again, amen. When you get the plank out of your own eye, you can see people the way God see people. Rather than seeing people with a critical and judgmental eye, we'll begin to see them through the love of God. See, God wants us to love people, amen, when, amen, when those, uh, you know, we say diamonds in the rough, praise God, amen. He wants us to love them through it. He wants us to see their hearts and who they are and what he's placed on the inside of him, okay, because they were created in the image and the likeness of him. He said, deal with your eye first. Then in Matthew 5 and 24, 25 says this, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. He said, first. Be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him. Let your adversary deliver you to the judge and the judge hand you over to the officer and you are thrown into prison. He said, first be reconciled to your brother. Amen. He said, do that first. Before you come to the house of God and worship, he said, first be reconciled with your brother. God is a relational God. Praise God. 
Relationships are huge to him. And he wants us to be walking in right relationship with other people. We should always strive to do that. Always strive to do that. Even if they did something to you you didn't like. I mean, I don't have so many lies told on me. I mean, I, 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 you know, I mean, folks, I'm telling you, no, you have no idea. I'm telling you, really, you really have no idea what I've had to deal with. And, and just, just it's, I mean, in ministry. Now, I didn't have no problem before I got in ministry. But you can tell that old crazy look folks give you. You know what I mean? They, you know, they done heard something or they, somebody done said something or, or somebody done done something and all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? But, uh, but one thing I try not to do is break relationship with people over nonsense uh, unless God tell you to. Unless God tell you to. And sometimes he'll tell you that. Enough. Enough. You know what I mean? Let that go. So just let that go. Sometimes the best thing you can do for people is stay away from them. And, uh, and, and sometimes he'll, he'll let you know, amen, that's over. That's dead. Okay? Amen. Move on. Move. I don't, don't, you don't be mean to people. That's what I'm saying. Praise God. But see, God gives you grace for people. He, he gives you grace. So he says this, guys, listen, be reconciled to your brother. Be reconciled to your brother. He said, then come and offer your gift to me. You understand? He said, don't, don't come with all this stuff in your heart uh, toward other people. Okay? First do that. Then he said in Matthew 12 and 29, or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless what? <coughs> he said he first got to bind the strong man. You first got to bind the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. So that's very important. We got to bind the strong man. <coughs> because if you don't bind the strong man, listen, in order to bind the strong man, you got to find out uh, who the strong man is and what's operating in people. Because some folks, you'll waste time, you'll waste, you, you'll waste time for years trying to deal with their situation because you don't know what the strong man is. People got strongholds. They got strongholds in their lives. And if you don't first bind the strong man, well, of course, you know, he's referring to the enemy. But like we told you about, uh, about fasting, he said this kind. This kind. Only go out by prayer and fasting. So some people, you know, this strong man is, is, has a stronger hold in some people's lives than it do others. You see. Amen. See, they'll let you know quick in a hurry. They don't want, no, I don't, I don't want you ministering to me. That devil will put a wall up. You see. Or whatever, whatever that strong man is that's operating. Now, you, you can't get offended at people because what it is is just the enemy working in people trying to keep them bound. It's not against you. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to get offended, praise God. But it's working in them trying to keep them bound. Okay? And instead of them resisting the devil, they'll assist the devil. And so the strong man rules. The strong man controls. In our house, Jesus is the strong man. See, when Jesus come in, what was supposed to happen, amen, he, he let the devil know your lease is up. You've been evicted. you got to go, baby, and kick the devil out of your life, amen. And then he came in and filled you with the Holy Ghost, and Jesus began to rule this house. But before he came, see, the devil claims you, you belong to him, that you his house. And he don't want to go. That's why Jesus said this kind. Amen. Only go through prayer and fasting. Praise God. I don't know, amen, but I feel a little lighter, amen. I don't know what was, something might have been holding me down, but the fact I've been, I've been released. Glory to God. That fasting release him. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Them reels might have some demons on them. I don't know what's going on. Praise God. We need to, we're going to need to ease up. <laughs> String beans must be uh, <laughs> spirit filled. <laughs> man, I don't want to see. I mean, you know, I don't. I mean, anyway, let me praise God. Let me move on. Praise God. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see a chickpea. Let me see y'all. Uh, so, <laughs> I was eating hummus. Hummus. <laughs> I used to run from that stuff. But if that's all in the refrigerator, I said, shoot, man, let me try it. Let me at least try it. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I tried all kinds of stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 22 and 36 said, Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? What is the great commandment in the law? 
And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and with all of your mind. He said, this is the what? This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is likened to it. And of course, he told us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Love our neighbors as ourselves. See, that's what he was talking about when he said, I'll write my laws in their hearts and in their minds. I'll write them in their law, my laws in their heart and in their minds. Love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor. See, that's been written in your heart. The enemy just don't want you to obey it. And he, he does everything he can to distract it, distract you to keep it from happening. To keep you from developing that love relationship with the Lord. It's not hard. Go back and say, we don't have to work for it. It's just, it's, it's in you. It's in you. Praise God. That you, to, to love God. It's in you to worship God. Your New Testament priesthood. Your royal priest. Your kings and priests. Matter of fact, your kingly priesthood. Thank you, Lord God. And see, that was God's intention for the whole nation of Israel. To have a kingdom of priests. Israel was supposed to evangelize the world, but the devil tricked them. When Moses went up on the mountain, you see, they said, well, for, for this Moses fellow, we don't know where he is. said, so make us a God that'll take us back into Egypt. Couldn't get Egypt out of them. See, amen. Had a slave mentality. Couldn't get, couldn't get Egypt out of them. So they said, make us a God. Make us a God. If God don't do what we want him to do, we'll make our own God. And now in America, we got thousands. Talking about voodoo in Haiti. Man, we got more gods in America than, um, you know, it's in a different form. In a different form. See? Uh, yeah, full of idolatry. Full of idolatry. So this is the whole thing. See, so, so bottom line is, man, look, love God first. Put him first. That's all he's saying. He's saying, just put me first. Establish that relationship. Praise God. And that's what, you know, what, what, what Minister Ron is talking about. When we all begin to operate in our priestly ministry, our priestly ministry, whoo, glory to God. Glory to God. Carrying that glory. Then he said in Matthew 23 and 26, he said, blind Pharisees, first, clean the inside of the cup and the dish, that the outside may be clean also. Well, you know, it was fussing at Jesus about not uh, cleaning the cups and dishes before he drank and washing hands and all of that, amen, according to rituals and tradition. And Jesus said, why are you worrying about the outside of the cup? Why don't you first clean the inside of the cup? See, so what he was saying to them was, you all caught up all, in all this uh, outward religion, amen, and trappings, of what we, you know, Jesus didn't die to give us a religion. He really didn't die to give us a religion. He died to give us the kingdom. Amen. That's what he died for. You know, when you, when you say you're a Christian, you know, Jesus really didn't call us that. They began to call them that because they was like Christ. You understand? That's how they got the name. Because they noticed that these men have been with Jesus. Because everything Jesus did, they began to do. So they called them Christians, first at Antioch. But really, you know, what you are, you, you, you're a kingdom citizen. You're a follower of Jesus. Because when you say Christianity, folks automatically put you in this religion realm. But Jesus didn't die to give us religion. He died to give us relationship, baby. We got relationship. We got kingdom. Glory to God. And it's totally different. Totally different. And that's a mindset. We're going to change that. See, as we move along, we're going to begin to see all that. He said, first clean the inside. First clean the inside. I don't know about you. When I got saved, all everybody was worried about was what you looked like on the outside. That's all they worried about. I mean, you had to wear long sleeves. Couldn't wear this. You couldn't wear that. Amen. I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't mess with those that do. 
And uh, Teresa said, y'all done heard all those, amen, but I don't know if you have, amen, so I'm going to keep repeating them. But anyway, <laughs> you know, women, you couldn't wear red shoes. Who got red shoes on? Well, if you had on red shoes, they called you Jezebel. <laughs> Your daughter of Satan. I mean, they was just, you understand what I mean? Uh, you couldn't do nothing. You couldn't get earrings. I mean, just, just nothing. Necklace, all, all that was forbidden. You understand? And so, you know, what, what, what they called it was cleaning up. You need to clean up. Need to clean up. So, of course, I was a little confused because I'm looking at folks all over in uh, the continent of Africa and all that. They got rings everywhere, man. They got rings in the nose and the ears and everything. Praise God. And I, I, just, I just couldn't figure out, you know, how that was going to clean somebody up based on, don't get me wrong, there's some kingdom ethics. I get that. There's a certain way we need to dress and present ourselves. Amen. Paul said, you know, of course, Timothy, Timothy, you know, modest apparel. I get that, praise God. But what I'm saying is everything was focused on what I look like on the outside, but nobody was dealing with my heart. Nobody was dealing with my thought life. Nobody was dealing with my intentions and my motivations. Nobody was dealing with my character. As long as I look good on the outside, I guess they figured everything's good in Brookwood. But it wasn't good. Amen. I just looked good on the outside. You know, man looks at the outward appearance. But God was looking at my heart. And God said, forget about that. First of all, you need to clean the inside up. Get the inside clean. And you don't have to tell people what to wear. Because the Holy Ghost will say, don't you put that on. You don't need to be wearing that. You don't need to be going there. You don't need to be hanging out over here. You know, let the Holy Ghost teach and lead and guide you into some things. We got to learn to hear from God ourselves, amen. So God, we, we need to know the voice of God. Know the voice of God. So he said the first thing you do is let God clean up the inside. Because a tree is always known by the fruit it bears. You don't have to cut to the heart of a tree to know what kind of tree it is. I can tell a pear tree from an apple tree. You want to know how I can tell the difference? One got pears on it, <laughs> and one got apples on it. Hallelujah. I say, you can tell a tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. Hallelujah. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, <laughs> walk like a duck, <laughs> it's probably a duck. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> See, my. Okay, praise God. So first, we, he said we got to clean up on the inside. That's the first thing that's got to happen. David said, wash me, Lord. Cleanse me. Thank you, Father. Create in me a clean heart. He said the right spirit on the inside of me. Because it does no good, man, to just pretend like everything's okay on the outside. You can't have a relationship with nobody like that. Amen. Even with your husband or wife. What good is it to be in a marriage and pretending like? You know, we pretend like we get along. But really, we don't talk. And really, you don't know me and I don't know you. And we don't communicate. And we don't share things. And we don't do things together. But we married. No, you ain't married. You business partners. You just living in. You paying bills together. That's not a marriage. A marriage is where two become one. What God joins together. That's where you're connected in heart and in spirit and in soul. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you become one, see. Well, that's the way it is with God. He said, hey, amen, you draw not to me with your lips, but he said, your hearts, he said, far from me. That's what happens when we don't clean up the inside first. It's of no value to look saved. Amen. That's like being in a car accident and saying, I almost survived. No, you didn't. I mean, either you survived or you're dead. <laughs> you're dead, but you're talking about you almost survived. No, you're dead. Thank you, Jesus. You're not almost saved. Either you're saved or you're not. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about I almost. Well, do it then. Glory to God. Go ahead and come all the way in. Praise God. 
And then lastly, Matthew 28 and 1, he said, after the Sabbath, after the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came uh, to see the tomb. The first day of the week. See. And I'll talk to you about the first day of the week. Amen. As it relates to gathering together as the saints of God on the first day of the week. Jesus rose on the first day of the week. First things first. People say, well, I'm missing church ain't no big deal. I'll tell you what it is to me. Because I like to start my week off in the house of God. See, praise God. Over the last 24 years, amen, every morning at Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, I know where I'm supposed to be. I don't have to plan for it. I don't, I, I don't have to make uh, no changes. I don't have to explain nothing to nobody or anything like that. Don't talk to me about doing nothing on Sunday morning. Praise God. That's already established. I know where I'm supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Now, I know y'all looking at me saying, well, of course that applies to you. Amen. But, I mean, I mean that might be true. Praise God. That might be true. Thank you, Father. Kind of like that one fella. Amen. I ain't going to tell that joke. Amen. Let's move on. Praise God. But what I'm saying is, Jesus said, put it first. What he's talking about is, make it a priority. Make it a priority. Nobody's forcing you to come to church or anything, but make it a priority. See, you have to do that. Make that a priority, to be in the house of God, to set aside that time for you and God. Amen. I mean, you can be in church any day of the week, but I'm just simply saying, he established the first day. And it's a principle behind that. That, that I want to share with you. So when we talk about spiritual alignment as we close, amen, we're going to receive communion and we're going to let you go, guys, okay? Signs that we're coming into spiritual alignment with God. Your spirit man is leading and guiding. Amen. Your soul and spirit, amen, uh, in other words, you're no longer body ruled. But your spirit man is leading and guiding you. That's when you know you're coming into spiritual alignment. Your spirit man is in control. When the peace of God is ruling in your heart, the peace of God is ruling in your heart, you're coming into spiritual alignment. Thank you, Father. There's a peace of God in your heart that says all is well. Thank you, Lord God. You're coming into spiritual alignment. When you're no longer controlled by fear, you're coming into spiritual alignment. See, as, as the word we gave, see, what God wants us fearing is fear him. Not, not be afraid of him, but fear him. That's what God wants. And if you fear God, you'll never have to worry about fearing man. Praise God. Passionate love for God and others. Sin no longer have dominion over you. You're coming into a spiritual alignment with God. You're walking in genuine, genuine repentance. Amen. I be saying genuine. Genuine you're walking in genuine repentance. And repentance simply means a change of mind. Change of mind. You have a victorious attitude toward life. A victorious attitude towards life. Can't tell you how many Christians you meet and they got this gloom, despair, and agony over me. <laughs> Deep down misery and all that kind of stuff or whatever, man. That's the attitude. If it hadn't been for bad luck, I Oh! That's kind of their attitude. Now, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, do you? You don't have a clue what hee haw is, do you? They looking like, Mama, where does, where's Pastor get? Who, who said that? Amen. Hee haw. Um, <laughs> praise God. I tell you what, man, I'm, I'm, my age is telling on me here now. Glory to God. But that was their attitude. Attitude. And, and it's so sad, amen, that many times in life we don't have a victorious attitude. That we're coming out, that we're winners, man. You're on the winning side. You, 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 you got you to gotta know, man, things going to work out for you. God's going to open doors for you. Things go, I serve the God of a turnaround. I'm coming out, baby. I got some plans, and they huge. I got some big old plans, man. Glory to God. Forget about that small thinking. You ain't no grasshopper, glory to God. You a giant killer. You a giant slayer. Man, you, you, he said, listen, you got to dream big. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You got to say, Lord, get in here and work on my mind. You don't want to end up like them Beverly Hillbillies, amen? See, if you don't get your mind renewed, you'll go to a new place. 
but keep doing the same old thing. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? Amen. They left the hills and went to Beverly Hills. Amen. But the mind didn't get uh, renewed. So they went over there with that same thinking, driving that same old car, eating them same old food, wearing them same old clothes, uh, uh, chasing pot. I don't know what was the, they thought the swimming pool was a, was a, was a pond. And uh, who to drive, what they used to fix to drive there, the possum stew. And, uh, <laughs> and what? Fiddles. Fiddles. Vittles. Oh, that was the food. Okay, yeah, vittles. Good. Man, Sir Charles I woke up over there. He gave me the whole collection, man. I said, <laughs> I got the whole DVD collection of the Beverly Hill Village. Glory to God. Well, I tell you what, man, they don't make them like they used to, do they? Thank you, Father. Amen. But that's what happens when you don't get your mind renewed. You're no longer walking in condemnation. You're lining up your will with the will of God. Amen. And, uh, and righteousness, peace, and joy is abounding in your life, you see. So what I'm saying when I'm coming to spiritual alignment, guys, let me, let me just sum it up with this, praise God. Uh, too many of us are out of balance. Now, our lives are just it's out of balance. And God, God wants us to align it. An unjust balance, you see. And, and God wants us to bring it into alignment, praise God. And that's why we're talking about these first things first and talking about kingdom alignment and spiritually who we are in the kingdom. Amen. So we can bring balance to our lives. Okay. God wants us to bring balance to our lives. I'm going to have to end it there this morning. Praise God. But, um, <clears throat> but I just want to say to you, thank you, Jesus. This is, this is when you know you're, you're coming uh, into spiritual alignment. Thank you, Father. And it's something you can just sense, man. You know, all of us really want to live a life that's pleasing to God. We, we, we want to be like Jesus, when he was baptized by John and came out of the water, and God said, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Thank you, Father. See, and deep on the inside, that's one of the longings of our hearts. There's many, but that's one. We want to know our life is pleasing to God. Say, Lord, I want, I want to know that. And we want to know we accept it. We want to know that our life is pleasing God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.